Christine in Columbus, thanks for waiting. You're Hi, on. how are you guys tonight? Just fine. How are you? I, I'm. I don't even know. I don't even know how to answer that. It's, it was nice to have a female voice for once on this show. <laughs> what was that? Hope you guys are having a blessed day out there so far. So far, not as far as I can tell. <laughs> what you got for us? Okay. Well, um, um, first of all, the the screening questions were very interesting. So thank you for that. I have um, no idea what question. I have no idea what questions people are asked when they're screened. Okay. But. Um. So, I just want to state I am a pantheist, which means I just, as a, as you would say, a default that I just generally believe that a higher power exists. Have you got any reason for that, or is that just like a feeling? That's just me personally. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know it's you personally. I was just wondering if there was a reason, or if you just kind of felt that way. I've always been spiritual for you know, my whole life. I didn't grow up in a religious household. I wasn't indoctrinated. I kind of came into it by my own merit. And I have multiple belief systems. So I don't hold a position in, okay, well, Jesus was the founder or this person was the founder. I just believe that there have been many messengers and teachers. But one thing I've been having a problem with is it seems like modern Christianity and no offense because I see the Bible as more of an inspirational thing aside from the hateful texts in there like sure. about slavery if we dump all the garbage and just keep some you know nice things about a few turds. hey <laughs> turn the other cheek that's really inspirational okay yeah I mean, the morality and all that. The morality is abhorrent. The morality of the Bible is vile and disgusting and repugnant. My, okay, you know, I respect your viewpoints. You know, I like listening to these things. I like Richard Carey debates. I like Christopher Hitchens. I can respect all their debates, and I love hearing these things, even though I have my own position and personal opinions on these things. Well, I think if you respected um, somebody's position, you'd share it. I think what you mean is that you respect my right to have a view that differs from yours. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I respect that right, too. But I don't respect the positions of, of the people who are dis disagreeing. But go ahead. But um, my thing is, is people, you know, devout, especially the evangelical cars culture they are so convinced that jesus is god but when you read through the bible it only states in maybe one or two places that he may imply that how many do you need nowhere nowhere else does he imply it i am the father of one what more do you need the guy was killed for putting himself co-equal with god according to the book but my thing is, is that's more of a parable. That could be like it's not a parable. I and my father, I and my father are one. Well, the divinity of Jesus is if a relatively see, late thing, right? If you to look on me as to look on the Father. If you see me, you've seen the Father. You know, whatever. The thing is, you're faulting someone for sincerely accepting what their holy book says, and yet I would argue that your reasons for what you believe are less sturdy, are less sturdy than the people you're objecting to. You know, why is it, you know, they can't just see him, you know, because the Bible was written after the time of Jesus. Yeah. And why, you know... The Bible's why kind of a Rorschach test. People people bring to it what they want. But there's more to it than that. There, There is a, a history of orthodoxy and doctrine and if you are raised in that and you think you have a biblical foundation, here's the thing, and, and I don't mean this to be insulting to you, Jane. My thing is I can stand up to Bible-believing Christians and point out that they have no good evidential foundation to believe what they believe. But the same thing applies to you, except that you have even less 
because you don't have any sort of revelation. You don't have the the ability to to land back on claims of prophecy. You just have this warm fuzzy, and you kind of let me take bits and pieces of everything. You've constructed a religion of your own making based on how you feel, and you can you're never going to make headway against them that way. Because and it's not like I haven't read scientific journals. I've had doesn't that doesn't mean I don't understand about cosmology or anything like that. You know, the, I just by default believe the, in a higher power. Well, I don't think it's by default. I think that belief is something that you have to become convinced of, and you can become convinced for good or bad reasons. And the reasons you've given so far are bad. Now, the problem here is that if you believe something for bad reasons and somebody else believes something for bad reasons and you're the one that's criticizing them, uh, why, why can't they just look at Jesus the way I do? And they're going to say the same thing. Why can't Jane look at Jesus the same way we do? She just doesn't know. She hasn't read. She hasn't, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, neither one of you I read gonna... my Bible every day. I've, I read it daily. I, okay. I, read, I, I read Psalms and Proverbs a lot. And I, I, but if... Christianity, and I guess this is what I I was trying to get at, not why I believe what I believe, but why is it if Christianity is supposed to be the religion of love, people are starting to see it as a hate thing? Because like, it's what? not the religion of love. It never was, never will be. That's not what Christianity is, even as a Southern, Southern Baptist. It's about God's love for, for human beings. It's not about you being uh, uh, loving. Christians are, are commanded. Well, to yeah, right. So if they're commanded... You, you, wait, 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 wait. You just said, yeah, right. What is it that they're commanded? Because I hadn't finished. So what is it you think they're commanded to do? Okay, so if, we're supposed, if they're supposed to accept Jesus, and there's, you know, I believe Jesus may have existed, you know, even though there's a stopping point when it comes to historical evidence for him, outside outside of written sources. You are now 10 miles away from the question I asked. What I'm trying to explain oh. is that you have a particular oh. view of the Bible and Christians have a particular view of the Bible. Yeah. Now, the, the, the issue here is how do we tell who's right? Well, if your foundation is based on what you feel and what you think, then you have no foundation. If they, ha if they have a foundation that's based on what's written... It could be wrong, but at least it's stronger than and sturdier, and it's external to them. Okay. It's not just their or, opinion, or at least some sort of historical dogma. But if the if the if the reality is that I can sit here as the third party and point out that both you and Christians have beliefs that you don't have good reasons to hold, then I'm in the position. I'm in, I'm in the better position. It would be silly for me to go debate someone who talks about faith in Christ. And have them say that, well, you wear your lucky socks and your lucky shirt and you go buy lottery tickets every week. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't do that. But if that were the case, they would be correct to point out hypocrisy because what I'm challenging is not the beliefs. I'm challenging the justification for the beliefs. Yes. Okay. I can. I can't do that as a know. pantheist. I don't see any reason for pantheism or panentheism or theism of any stripe. Well, you're an atheist, and I, 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 res I respect your, your, your stance on things, and, you know, just I, like I respect everybody else. But, you know, it just seems like, you know, why are they becoming more hateful? You know, it seems like they're really trying to, especially with everything going on in the world, it seems like they're really trying to be, and if God says, oh, well, come to me, and except my spirit, which I think is what God is, you know, he isn't, you know, to me, Jesus was just... This a no longer sounds like pantheism, but okay. He was just a, he was just a messenger. Well, he was just I think a some of the How it, do you know that? The recent uh, drama we've had with religious folks has largely been fear-based. They are, they are losing power, they are losing numbers, and they're afraid of that. The world is getting better. The world is getting better, and they're... And and they're, they're and the things, Ashford's beliefs are getting squeezed out. Yeah. It, <laughs> they, they are now waking up in a world where homosexuals can get married to each other. And that's scary. They, that. they are waking up in a world where their religious leaders are telling them that they are the victims. 
that their religious liberties and freedoms are being infringed on, when in reality, they're the ones that are doing the infringing. And when we stop them from doing it, when we take away the stick that they're beating people with, they want to whine and cry. About their persecution. They don't understand what they believe or why any better than you do. And you know, from what I get from the Bible, you know what what's taught, you know, from the, not the Old Testament, but the New Testament is that they are to be Christ-like. Well, love sure, is an you, action word. Yeah. So if you're going to be... You, if you, much stock in if you cherry pick verses, but let's say I was going to be Christ-like. Christ was a jackass too. G Jesus, you know, the, let me go make my own scourge and rip through the temple and run out the money launderers. Uh, let me say terrible things, you know, about the, I've only, come only to the house of Israel and blah, 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 and saying bad things about family. And I've done a whole verse by verse deconstruction to the Sermon on the Mount. And it, it, there's, it's a mix. It's exactly what you'd expect. There's some good advice. There's some bad advice. And there's a whole lot of stuff in there to make people feel like they're victims. When the world turns against you, it's because you are righteous. Well, maybe it's because you're a dick. Maybe. And so people are using this and saying, oh, look, so many troubles. People are turning against me. It's Satan. Satan's coming after me because I'm so righteous and right with God. There was this guy. He's had five terms, I think, in, in the Washington state uh, representative I think he's a representative. Um, I think I might have heard about that. He's now he's now being watched, I guess, a little by the FBI because he wrote a book on on or a pamphlet or whatever on biblical war and how you need to kill the unbelievers and how you need to kill oh boy. the the boys. And basically, he was just going down. He, you know what? He wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong if he what he wanted to write was what the Bible said he should do. He can cherry pick that shit just as easy as, as anybody else. And at the end of the day, if we're going to fix it. The thing that we have to do is get people to realize that they believe things for bad reasons. And that applies to you and pantheism as much as it does to Christianity. It's just, think, it's just that I don't think you're probably as dangerous. You know, and I think, you know, if, you know, I'm going to side with you in some aspects. I think that, you know, if the church is to survive, then they, you know, Christian the church itself is going to survive and we they need to embrace you know the changes around no what's going on no not so sure you know. because because if it's against their religious views to embrace it would be to become a heretic would be would be to be an apostate if you if you think that god is opposed to abortion and you just like well you know I'm not going to have one, but I'm fine living in a society that allows people to have one. You are no longer practicing the religion you believe. This, this is the thing that scares them. And, and it's not the only way for a religion to survive. You know, what, you know how religions have tended to survive? By doing the thing that, that Islamic extremists are doing. By taking over governments. By imposing religious doctrine. By doing it, in some cases by absolute force, but now we're a little more civilized, so we're just going to legislate your civil rights away because for whatever reason, despite the fact that Matt feels like he wakes up in bizarro world every day, they have the majority. People who think that the earth is six to 10,000 years old or perhaps flat or people who uh, believe in sacrificing animals on burnt altars, even though we don't have to do it anymore. But once upon a time, it was a good idea right. because God likes it. And people who think that you're born bad and that you inherit sin from other people and that what we can do is have Jesus give up uh, a mildly bad weekend and fix everything for everybody. The, the people who think like this are a problem but they're not the enemy. The ideas are the enemy. And going after those ideas, and, and this applies, sorry to say, Jane, to pantheism, panentheism, all stripes of theism, everything that cannot be demonstrated to be real, that people are believing are real and acting on behalf of and legislating on behalf of, those things need to be expunged and I can, from society. I can respect your opinions. I don't get offended easy. Trust me, I don't. Okay. You know, I have friends that are atheists, and it don't bother me. You know, they're still my friends, and, you know, I get in heated debates that, once in a while. But Okay, hey, then I want, you to, I want you to think about this, because we're, we're out of time, and Parenting Beyond Belief is getting ready to start, so I'm going to wrap this up. Take the sentence you just said 
and start substituting other things in for atheists. I have friends that are black and it doesn't bother me. I have friends that are gay and it doesn't bother me. Think about how that sounds because there's a hidden implication in there that there's something wrong with it, but you're personally gonna be okay with it. And that's garbage. I'm not okay with it, not remotely okay with it. I'm, I'm fine. I have friends that are gay and black and atheist and Christian, blah, 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 and they're still my friends and everything else, but I wouldn't ever do this sort of, well, I respect your opinion. I mean, it's kind of like the bless your heart crap that we hear in the South. Oh, bless your heart, which really means, God, you're an idiot, but I love you anyway. No, I don't believe that about people. I really do. One of the things we'd like to nudge you to do is to think about whether your beliefs are true and whether you have good reason to believe them. And whether you care whether your beliefs are true, because evidently some people don't. And if you don't care, okay, fine. I, I, I think everybody can and does care when you finally get down to it. But if you care about whether or not your beliefs... You know, I am not just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not one of them where I'll just say, Hey, I don't, I don't agree with you, but I still care about you. I'll say that. I don't have to, you know, I'll say, Hey, I don't exactly agree with what you say, you know, or, you know, but I still, and I'll, I'll say, Hey, you know what? I'm not an atheist, but I respect your stance. I, I have a boss that's an atheist. And I told him that. And okay. he told me why he's an atheist. So I can... Uh, well, I don't say, respect okay. your stance. I don't respect your position. Not but one you're bit. you're a nice person. But <laughs> I respect the person, and I respect your right to hold that position. But I don't remotely respect your position. That's, I mean, it, it may be a subtle little th difference in language, but yes, it's true. I can respect and care about a person without agreeing with them, without, and, and I can absolutely despise their position. Uh, I have family members who have positions that I don't know if I could despise those positions more. And I will never tell them, I respect your position. What I will say is, I respect your right to hold a different view from mine, but your position is repugnant. Not you. Well, yours is un unjustified as far as I can tell, but not, not nearly as repugnant as, as like the guy who's creating the Bible manual for killing people. But we've completely run out of time. I got to let you go. Thank I appreciate it, Jane. Uh, there's already callers.